And will you welcome Pastor Gene Vossick to the platform right now? Come on, welcome him like you know how. Come on. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Hey, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Pastor. Come yeah. on, give the Lord praise. Yeah. He's in the house. Yeah. You may be seated. <laughs> In the first service, I asked you to just tell the story just for a minute about how God spoke to you for the very first time about this property. This right property, here. This right, property here. right here. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I got to get acquainted with you first. <laughs> God bless you. But let me just start then uh, right there. Uh, this is about a year after that we had our first service in the uh, schoolhouse and a small group of people. And I'm looking for property. You ever, it's fun looking for property, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. We looked all over property and, and couldn't find any that was suitable for our little congregation at that time. And I pulled in off Boudreaux Road right here, and there's a little driveway just before you entered this property uh, right there. And I was facing north, praying, God, we need some property. That property was for sale, uh, $280,000 for 18 acres, and we just... But that was out of reach. And, and I mean, you know, we've only been in existence. No, and so uh, I was praying, God, you know, you know, you get to praying, you got to listen too. That's right. Because God's got a word for you. God's got a word for you. And uh, I'm facing this way. I'll kind of just in between. And the Lord said, turn over here and look. And I turned over here, and there's this big old sign, weather beaten, weeds growing up around it, kind of slewy, slewish, maybe swamp. Amen. And uh, when I saw that, it quickened. That's the property. That three acres is where we start. Three acres, and I called about it. Yeah, it's still for sale. $45,000. We'll take it right away. Went to the church folks and talked to them about it, told them about it. And the first service, we raised $47,000. To pay for the Come on, church. Just time. Let's celebrate that beginning. Hey, 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 I want to tell you something. God was in it right there, and away we went. <laughs> Amen. Away we went. Praise God. Well, am I going to preach here? Well, I wanted you oh. to tell that story, and let's give the Lord praise one more time for Pastor Vasek. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> give God a shout. Give him a shout. Woo! Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Create, you know what? You're creating an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to just move in here and talk to you. He's going to talk to you about you. Hey, praise God. So he can help you be stronger and better than ever before. Before I get started, though, I, I've got to take a moment to do this. I want to honor also my wife, Linda, because without her, I wouldn't have made it very far. Amen. <laughs> She was, she was a foundation, she part of the foundation, amen, and uh, she sticks with me today. We got a pastor in a little church out in Uvalde by Streams of Mercy. I started that a few years ago, and she's my keyboard operator, she's my banker, she's my bookkeeper, she's my, my help in every way, so I do appreciate Linda, my wife. God bless you, great lady. Great lady, loves God, loves the Bible. Now, let's talk about your pastors just a bit. You all love your pastors? Do you tell them once in a while? I tell you what, you, if you'll honor the man or the pastors that lead you, God will honor you. You need to teach honor because this couple here are, are, are foundation stuff. They are good as gold. I've known Amy since, uh, well, just the day she was born. <laughs> hey, man, and of course, Pastor Richard come along and fell in love with her, and he joined the family, and I've known him now. Boy, it's been way back, you know. We've grown up together almost. So praise God, honor them. They preach, honor that preaching. Love on them. You know, shake their hands, just hug them, hold them in. They need that as much as you do. They need that as much as you do. So I, I want to honor them. And then there's Christian coming along and Molly. My line, that boy can preach, can he? Oh, yeah. Youth pastor, I'm telling you, I'm sitting there amazed. and say, oh, God, wow, uh, hallelujah. And, uh, and then uh, God's going to, and something about, I got to tell you about Christian. I was there the day that, the, of delivery. And uh, the delivery wasn't easy, but he, she got him out. <laughs> And uh, I was praying in the side room there in the hospital. He said, right here in Tombaugh, God, what, 
how's this young man going to make it as I'm looking at the future and I kind of a negative view, I guess. So, God, how's he going to make it? And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Oh, I like it when the Holy Spirit speaks. Amen. We got to have ears to hear what the Spirit says. And the Spirit of God said, I will give him words for his generation. Wow, that settled it right there. And today, was it 25 years later? Wow, it's come to pass, hasn't it? He's got words like you can. Well, there's, there's nation coming right along. Nation singing on the platform. And God's hands upon him. When he was born, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And, and he said to me, this, uh, I have made him and his brother t- as two blazing flames of fire. And boy, I'll tell you what, they're teamed up, amen, to change things, to to usher the presence of God in. They're, they're great guys. And today we're celebrating uh, Ashland's graduation. Oh, man, 12 years. Uh, Ashland, come to me. We're just talking about the old Frisky Squirrel stories we used to tell. Uh, J- Jesse, way back in there, uh, was you in on those Frisky Squirrel stories years ago? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, way, well, uh, okay. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, Ashlyn here is always crawling in my lap when we'd be out the hill country. You know, tell me a Frisky Squirrel story, Pop. Tell me about Frisky Squirrel. And so we'd always tell her a story. And uh, now I told her just a little bit ago that uh, Frisky Squirrel is going to hospice. He's been, he's, he's been around long enough. <laughs> uh, but, but I think he's going to get healed. He's going to be better than yeah. ever. Amen. I pray for Frisky Squirrel. Uh, you don't know about Frisky Squirrel. That's an old story we used to tell about make-believe and kind of work it into their lives. But God's so good. Praise God. So God is so good. So good. So good. And just turn to somebody and say, so good, so good, so good, so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I don't want to miss anybody, but uh, uh, you're a good-looking bunch. You know that? What did you all do? Take a shower this morning, dress up, comb your hair? You all looking good, aren't they? You ought to be proud of this church, Pastor. These are good people. This morning's service, they were tremendous. And, uh, and somebody told me, he said, the second service is even better. So, whoa, hallelujah. <laughs> I want to talk to you a little bit today on the serious side, but not serious. I want you, first of all, to relax. Uh, a, a relaxed believer, not to go to sleep, but relax. <laughs> Because when you're relaxed, you become easier to receive from God. If you're sitting up there tight, all feared up, worried about what you did, what you didn't do, what you didn't do, and what you should do, and all that that stuff, you sit there and the Holy Spirit just kind of hits you, but bounce off. You want to be one that just swallows in the work of the Holy Spirit. Because God's got something to tell you today. Amen. God's got some good stuff to tell you. And uh, I'm just going to story tell a little bit and give you a few scriptures and and I'm just going to enjoy being with you. But I'm going to tell you how we can kind of break the ice a little bit. Uh, in my first church, way back Mount Moriah, 1966, uh, Mount Moriah, Missouri. Uh, that is not Moriah where they sacrificed, but uh, in Mount Moriah. Uh, I had an older gentleman come to church there. We just had a handful of people at that time. First church preached 10 minutes, you know, kind of dead and dull. You know, just having a hard time. Young preachers are like that. Or I was anyway, and Walter Booth was his name, and and, and he uh, would would get to praising God. I'd be preaching, he see I get a little dry. He says, "I praise God, Hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God." His wife would chip in, you know. Let me tell you, I'm I'm preaching this so that you'll help me out. <laughs> if I get a little dry, glory to God, Hallelujah, and then rub your hands against it. Ooh, this is going to get good. Come on. Get your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. It's going to get good. It's going to be good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise, he said, oh, he's going to be radical. Yep. That's the way it is. But God sent me here to, as a wake-up call. and Because uh, I got a wake-up call. About less than a year ago, uh, I'm sleeping and uh, just resting and I, I, pass, I don't have a whole lot to worry about. i got a nice little church. They love me. Streams of Mercy and, and Uvalde, they love us. They're beautiful people. Uh, they don't require much. And you can get to 
get too relaxed, you know, and that's what I was doing. Probably not praying like I should. Why, why pray they're going to have a good service, you know, or they're going to be there, they're going to give good. It's all going to work out good. You know? Do you ever do that? I just say, oh, it's okay. Satisfied. Right. Glory to God. <laughs> you, you woke up in a minute. So here I am sleeping in this satisfied condition. I don't know what time it was early in the morning, usually 3 o'clock. And in my sleep, I had a night vision, and an angel appeared to me in a flash and handed me this sword and said, Fight! <laughs> it is a real sword. And he said, Fight. Don't you know that when an angel wakes you up in your sleep and says, Fight, there's something to it. Amen. There was a message to me. Wake up, preacher. Wake up. It's wake up and shake up time. It's time to move on and, and wake up to what's going on around you. Most people today, including myself, if we get dull in the spirit, amen, God seems to step aside and it's not so important anymore to be that full of the Holy Ghost like you should be. Not, not that important to be in church like you should be. It's just not that important to read the Word like you should be. When everything's going smooth, well, this is a wake-up call for river of praise. Uh, you've been a little bit too dormant. You got the best preachers here. You got the top notch worship, amen. You got some of the greatest people that'll take care of everything for you. And all you have to do is come. Now, th that's got to change. That's got to change. You got to get on the move. You've got to become, and I called my sermon, you've got to become a spiritual warrior. You've got to be a warrior for God in this hour. Amen. Somebody, somebody has got to do some fighting in this outfit. Amen. We are in the army of God. We are ambassadors for Christ. We are representatives of Jesus. And I looked at the word of God and everywhere that Jesus went, there was a fight. There was a fight. There was a battle. Amen. Where he come to cast out demons. He cast out demons. Amen. Come to a sick person. He healed the sick. Come to a dead person. He raised the dead. Come on. He come to a confused person. He, he got them all straightened out. It, it is every place that Jesus went, he was a warrior. And I'm going to tell you, God is recreating warriors like Jesus to walk in the face of this earth right now. Amen. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. How many like a good fight? Oh, man, I'm going to tell you. And I learned one thing when I was in the Army. Uh, way back in 66, the Suez Canal was... Uh, uh, having some problems in Egypt. And so they were training a bunch of us guys to go into hand-to-hand -hand combat in, into that area. And, uh, and we did. We trained, we trained with the, with the bayonets and the big M1s and shot the 50 caliber machine guns and shot the 105 howitzers and shot the bazookas and all that stuff, getting ready to go in. But the thing is, we weren't gonna have any cover. And we we're gonna go in on an individual basis. Amen, but it's gonna take some training. And so we, we took, undertook some training, and, and it was severe training, too. I'm going to tell you something, because it taught you how to kill somebody, and that's a horrible thing. But that's what we had to do. My army sergeant said this. He said to me, he said, can I say it the way he said it? Yeah, well. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Young stud. <laughs> that's what, and he said, when you go in on hand-to-hand -hand combat, it's going to be just you and your enemy. Are you listening? Yeah. And when you go in there, there's nobody else going to help you. You're going to be in there with him, and it's going to be either him or you. It's either going to be live or die. It's either going to be a winner and a conqueror or, a, uh, or defeat. And, it, and I never forgot that because I like now this to the church. You are in a battle. You have battles coming up. Devil has plans for you. Amen. Yes, he does. The devil has plans for you to keep you down, to shoot you out, to knock you out. And if you're not highly trained, and we've got a tremendous training session here 
uh, place here where you can be trained to be a warrior. Amen. To be a winner and be a conqueror. I've been watching those courses you're singing. Those are powerful, man. Those are powerful because they get you moving in the spirit. Praise the Lord. So if I don't want to see any more people, any more casualties. We don't need casualties. We need winners. We need people to get on their feet and go forward. Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm excited. So this morning, God sent me here to stir you up. Stir that part of you up. Amen. Stir you to become a warrior, to become a fighter, to become a fighter in the spirit, to be able to fight with your faith. Amen. To fight with the word of God, to fight in the name. See, the sword is a sword of the Lord. Amen. It's a sharper, two-edged sword, you know. And who is the sword in the Bible? It's the word. Who is the word? It's Jesus. Amen. And we're representing Jesus, hallelujah, as our, as our father, as our Lord, as our super king. Amen. So I'm excited about this because you are born to overcome. You are a winner and supposed to be a winner in all your battles. And winning won't come out. And it won't happen without a fight. Hmm? Fight! Yeah. Come on, Peter. Now you're the one that's having a dream. Stick your hands out. I'm the angel. Fight! That makes a difference, doesn't it? It's a real one. <laughs> but I want you to take this into your spirit right now and fight. 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 You're going to fight your enemy. You're going to fight till you win. You're not going to lose. Amen. You're going to fight devils. Amen. You're going to fight sickness. You're going to fight depression. You're going to fight all those things. You're going to fight lack and poverty. Amen. And God's called you to be an overcomer. An overcomer in all things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're excited about that. Faith in God must be uh, dominant and we must have a word from God for all the things that we're about to do. So praise God. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. I'm going to tell you something. You're going to need the power of God to go against the power of the world. But God is a greater power. That's why you need his power if you're going to win. Because the sickness is power. Did you know that? Poverty has power. Amen. Insanity has power. Uh, uh, we're facing all kinds of enemies out here. And you've got to have the power of the Holy Ghost. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. If you're, how many are filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues? Oh, wait a minute. Look at here. Oh, thank God. If you don't speak in tongues, you need to receive this wonderful experience. It'll bless you. It'll help you. It's one of God's weapons he puts in your hand to be an overcomer. So, amen. Uh, but so I'm, well, I'm going to go on that. We'll let the... Uh, Church here teach you out more about that. But it, the power of the Holy Ghost is power to take back what has been stolen from you. Yes. Boy, some of you have been robbed blind. Yes. And the bad part of it is, Pastor, some of them don't even know it. Right. Do, you, do you ever stop and think about what you could have had, but don't have? You could have did, but you didn't do. That's, that's thievery in an area that most people never think about. And so, have you ever thought about the souls that you could win, but don't try to? Come on. We want to be winners in Christ. We want to be spiritual warriors for God. We want to be top-notch people. Amen? We want to move quickly in the Spirit and be receivers, but not only receivers, but doers of the work. So we need to take the power away from the enemy, wherever it is. Uh, First Samuel, and I don't have that up, but uh, David lost his whole family. Amen. It's a tragedy to lose your whole family. Uh, the, the enemy came in, stole his wives, his kids, and, and, and the army that he was with. He was fighting one battle. They were, well, he were fighting one battle. The enemy is working in another place. You've got to be careful of that. You gotta be careful of that, and, and you can't forget any area of your life. Some you might be very good in one area of your life, really top notch. In another area, <laughs> huh? Come on, you gotta watch that. So you gotta be be really super spiritual, spiritually 
led, uh, to be alert to, to what's going on. And David got in this problem. He come home and everybody's wiped out and he lost everything. And here he was fighting a good fight for God. And, and he lost it. And he said, God inquired of the Lord. The Bible says he inquired of the Lord. That means he prayed. He sought God. He looked to God. Well, it's still the answer. Did you know that? And, and he said, uh, what should I do? What should I do? And God spoke to him. Oh, isn't it good when you get a word from God? Yeah. And God said to him, pursue. Yeah. Pursue. Yep. Yeah, why? Because there's God's part and there's your part. Yeah. There's God's work and there's your work. Yep. Amen. There's the son. Amen. And then there's your work. Praise God. So we're going we're gonna to go. And verse 18 tells us, and I'm just kind of skipping around here. He recovered all. He recovered all. I want to tell you some things. Most people don't realize how big and good God is. Awesome God. I have the privilege of sitting on my front porch in the evening, looking up, and there's mountains all around us. We're in a beautiful canyon area. Some of you have been there. You know what it is. And, and horses will be out there grazing in front, and, and you'll be looking up at the stars. and stars. I, like that, I like that time of the evening. You look up at the stars, they start shining. There's a star up here. There's, wow, God's awesome. You know that? God's awesome. And I was at the feed store the other day picking up some horse feed. And one of the fellows works there calls himself a Christian. You know, a lot of people call themselves Christians. Right. <laughs> Aren't. Anyway, but not about him. He might be watching this. I don't know. If he is, he's he going to get shock of his life. <laughs> and I said, hi, hi, how you doing? He says, uh, well, the man upstairs is taking good care of me. Oh, that's spiritual, isn't it? Spirit of God hit me just like that. And said, talk to that man right there. Talk to that man. I'm not the God of the man upstairs. I am God Almighty. I am the Holy One. I am the Creator. I am everything. Out of me everything has come. I'm not just a man. See, the fella had put God on his level. And I'm telling you, many people today, good people, I'm sure they even love God to some degree, but they put God on their level. That's why miracles can't happen. You've got to put yourself under God and let Him begin to rule you and touch you and strengthen you and possess you. I'm telling you a good story here. Praise the Lord. I, I'm too old to do this. I should retire. You know that? I had, I, God has, huh? Fight. Fight! Oh, okay. God gave me a vision, two visions here. One I want to tell you about uh, is so important for us. And in this vision, I'm awake, and I'm standing, and a river comes and appears before me. A huge river. Far as you could see, it was wide. Looked up downstream, looked upstream. Far as you see that river, just a flowing with a lot of water. Amen. Just, wow. And I'm standing there in this vision. And all at once, I start sinking. I start sinking and I find myself sinking below the river level of water. And I find myself standing under a river that's flowing over the top of me. As far as I can see in all directions, that river's flowing. Wow, that was an awesome thing, man, standing under a river. Do you ever stand under a river? And do you stand under a river? It's going to look different. <laughs> and I'm standing under there, and God showed me, says, that's, that's my river of blessings. and That's my river of benefits. Everything that I want people to have and bless them with is in that river. Amen. How many sing about a river around here? Isn't this the river of praise? Amen. Hey, I just thought that worked out good. And, <laughs> and then the Lord spoke to me and I'm standing there. He said, look a little lower. And I looked down and a world of people, a mass of people, one end, as far as you can see, far as, oh, there's a lot of people in this world. You know that? A lot of people in this area. And as I'm looking there, he said, now look close. And there was some people that were not paying any attention to that river that's flowing up front of them. <laughs> Something? How could you stand under a river and not pay any attention to it? <laughs> not pay any attention. How can you stand in the presence of God and not pay attention to him? Hmm? Oh, that was good. 
That was good. Hey, did you get it? Come on, cheer me up a little bit. Yeah, man, praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on. I need it. I need it right now. Nobody paid attention. They said, look a little closer. I looked a little closer, and then I saw a whole bunch of people in that bunch looking up. Looking up at the bottom of the river. Wow, that's exciting that you're looking up at the river. At least they've seen the river. A lot of people know about God, but ain't doing much about it. And then, <laughs> and then the third thing that happened, he said, look a little closer. I looked a little closer, and there was a whole lot of people's hands going up and grabbing benefits and, and, and gifts and, and exciting things. Uh, uh, their lack, their money, their, their health, they were reaching up. All kinds of people were reaching up. In a, aren't you glad there's a few people that believe in miracles that will reach out to God uh, and move the mountains, amen, and take what God has given us to, to win the battles, hallelujah, to win. You are a spiritual warrior. You are a child of God. Everybody say, I'm a child of God. I'm, a child of God. I'm growing into a son of God. I'm a winner. I'm an overcomer. I'm a spiritual warrior. I don't slack down. I speed up. Oh, thank God. Hallelujah for people who are excited about Jesus. Romans 8 will tell us in verse 16, the Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, you are a child of God. And if so, you are an heir. You're part. Hey, man, you're in fellowship. You're in partnership with the Lord. Now, I'm going somewhere with this now. So hang on a little bit here. Because we are to boldly declare who we are. I boldly declare who I am. I'm a child of God, brother. Amen. Amen. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not this and I'm not that. I belong to him. I was this and I was that. But now I belong to him. Amen. I'm a child of God. Amen. I'm a child of God. And then, why is it so important to be a child of God? Because let, Romans 8.29 says this. It's so good. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed. Oh, wait a minute. To the image of his son. So that he would be like the firstborn of many brethren. Oh boy. You were planned by God. You were planned by God to what? To come into this world and be conformed or changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. See, we don't see ourselves like Jesus. That's the one of the big hindrances to all of our faith. We do not see ourselves like Jesus. We do not see ourselves being able to cast out a devil. We don't see ourselves laying hands on somebody that's sick. Most of us, most people don't. They don't see themselves in the image of God. You're just like Jesus when you get saved. Well, you're not mature, but you, but you got all the qualities of him in you. That's important to know. Everybody say, I got all the qualities of Jesus in me. Because he's my pattern, I am, he's my example, I'm to be like him. I'm to be conformed like him. 1 John 4, 17. I'm going to give you another scripture. I'm going to tell some stories. And it says that we are to become as he is, so as he is, so also are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. If we're conformed to his image, if we're doing what his character would do, his nature would do. Are you conformed? Huh? Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Let's go now. When you pray, pray with some punch. Yep. Right. I, I'm, I, I'm careful who I let pray at my platform. Come on. They come on and pray. Huh? <laughs> For crying out loud, pray. <laughs> God don't like mumblers, amen, or grumblers. Uh, he, he wants you to, when you pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You're the Holy One. You are God Almighty, Creator God. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus, one who died on the cross for me uh, and resurrected and lives today and filled me with His Spirit and I'm His representative in the earth. Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're, we're going places, friends. We're going places. 
Now, another story. Why be so punchy? Why, why hit it so hard? Hit your, 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 oh, praise was absolutely fabulous here this morning. You guys have got that down. My church has got eaten down. We got the fellowship down, but you got the praise down. because, <laughs> And you got to know how to praise God. Oh, Bobby Bears, my first church, got saved. Big old rancher out there. Big Higgins, you know, big old boy. Rough cob, you know, as he was. And, and um, <laughs> he come to church after, after a few Sundays, after church's pastor. I can't raise my hands in praise like you do. I can't say that loud like you do. I said, well, you don't have to, but it helps. Here's what you do, Bobby. You go home and go home behind the milk barn. He had a milk barn back in his ranch there. I've been back in there, and it's way back in there. And, and I said, Bobby, when you get back there, I want you to raise both of those hands up. He said, I can't raise my hand. I said, get back there. Nobody's going to be around. Nobody's going to be looking. Raise both hands up there. Now, when you got those hands up there, keep them up there, and I want you to shout as loud as you can, praise God, hallelujah, I love you, Jesus. Why? Well, he's never, his eyes never saw his hands praising God. And his ears and never heard his mouth says in God. Come on, come on, really, I'm breaking through for somebody here today. And so we're not used to doing those things. But Bobby went home that day, that afternoon after church, went behind the barn. Yep. Amen. He had the cows listening, I guess. But, but he started praising God. And he started, and lifted him and big old hands up and shouted. I don't know how long he did for quite a while. He came to church that night. We had church twice that, uh, those times. Went to the church. Glory to God. He broke through. And, and, and from what was holding him back, he made that. Maybe some of you need to go behind the milk bar. Amen. And really, you say you're really good. Really get there and break through. Your hands need to be up in the air praising God. You do a good job here. I got to say that. I'd rather preach that to somebody else that really needs it. But it'll help somebody here. Amen. <laughs> oh, pastor, we're having fun today. Yes. Having fun. We just need to understand that God's got... But we're going to have to put some punch into it. I was standing and praying here one time, right here in this hall, by myself, nobody with me. I don't know if it was in the evening or morning or whatever. We used to have prayer meetings here at 6 o'clock. But this was when I was alone. I was praying. And I... Boy, I don't know why, but... I have a tendency, if I'm not careful, I let down. Oh, God, you know, Lord, you know, understand. You know, I just, I mean, God help me. It's, you know, no punch to it. God probably wasn't listening even. <laughs> well, I don't think he listens to foolishness. And all at once, this really happened in this church. It happened right here. All at once, in the spirit, I saw with my eyes... A balcony. I'm glad you didn't put the balcony up there. But I saw this big balcony. And hanging over this balcony were huge, dark figures. Demons, in other words. And they were screaming. They started screaming at me. You're going to go down. You're not going to build a church here. You're, you're going to fail. These people are not going to come. We're going to see to it. And they, they were just talking like that. Yelling at me. And then the amazing part was they turned on each other and started beating each other. Beating each other. Beating each other. And encouraging each other through beating to fight harder. Wow. Yeah. And whew, it left. I'm glad it left. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, that was an eye opener to the presence of the enemy that is around us all the time and we're not paying attention to him so he becomes a lying spirit to us uh, he becomes a deceiving spirit to us uh, he becomes a spirit that, that, that blinds our eyes uh, and we need to wake up and say hey devil out out of my sickness out of my body out of my mind come on out of my finances you are a spiritual warrior and you're to fight and you're to fight hard and you're to overcome those devils. Amen. Because they'll take you out if you let them. Right, Roger? Amen. I'm telling you, we're going to believe God. Are you going to believe God with me? You going to believe God with me? Praise God. God's good. My wife's great at casting out devils. 
You want, you want a devil cast out? Call her. Don't call me. In our school, when we were still meeting in the school before this church was in full operation, there was a ruckus in the, in the service, and some guys took a guy, a young man out. Can't mention his name, but took a young man out and took him in the back. He was in the, in the kitchen part, and they took him back, I don't know, back in a furnace room or somewhere. And I'm trying to preach. Pastor's running all kinds of problems preaching with disruptions, you know. <laughs> And I'm trying to preach, and, and pretty soon I hear screaming back there and hollering and going on. And the whole congregation, they're not watching me now. They're not listening to me. They're watching that door, and they're listening to that sound that's coming out of there. And so it went on, went on. I finally just dismissed the service out of, out of just, it's, I couldn't do it. It was just impossible with all that noise. Went back in there to find out that uh, one of the fellows said, yeah, well, as your wife, she had this guy down. She had her knees on his shoulders, looking him in the face, casting out devils out of him. <laughs> and one of the devils said, she asked him, what are you doing? And he said, I don't know what I'm doing here. I was on my way to Hollywood. <laughs> so you get, get a woman that will cast out devils. Don't, don't ask me, dude. I, I don't like cast out devils. <laughs> Amen. But she does. <laughs> now, praise God. I just love you. Thank you for putting up with me here this morning. God, thank you for putting up with me. Amen. I'm trying to help somebody. Amen. God wants you to see beyond your abilities and see into the spirit realm. See into the spirit realm. Uh, who was it? Elisha, his servant. Elisha's being faced with armies of men coming to wipe him and his group out. And his servant is saying, God... Well, I should, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We gonna... And he just turns to him and he says a little prayer for him. God, open up his eyes, he see. Yeah. Open up his eyes to see. And he did. God opened up his eyes to see. What did he see? He saw the horses and chariots of God by the multitudes up there. I want you to know that God is on the move. God is a protecting God. I was reading, uh, I figured it was Amos. Uh, or somewhere in there, that there's a vaulted dome that God has made out of his splendor. It's a covering. And you are covered, my friend, yes. by the divine covering of God. Yes. We believe in the blood covering. We believe in the covering of the word. We believe in the headship covering. All these are good coverings. But there's a covering that's covering you and your family and your home. It's covering you all the time. It's a vaulted dome. In other words, it's made solid. God is, not, is a covenant keeper, and he's going to bring you under that covering, keep you under that covering, and there you will be protected. Yes. Forget it. Uh, come on. Learn. Pastor, one of the things I'm learning out in the hill country out there, we're, we're, we're back in the woods back there by ourselves, now, and, and storms come. And, and God has really been using me to do this. I, I've been coming against the storms. You all pray against the storms here, don't you? Yeah. Uh, okay, keep doing it. Storm was coming here about, I think it was last summer. Brad, our son, was there with me. And we, the storm was, we was watching it on, 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 the, on, the, on the phone, yeah. That's so hard for me to understand. I grew up without phones, okay. And, and we're watching that storm come in, and he's watching it. Man, here's the storm coming, just about ready to come over the mountain right there. And I said, no, we're not going to have a storm here. In Jesus' name. I rebuke you storm, I rebuke you wind, I rebuke you sheer wind, I rebuke you hail, I rebuke you lightning, I rebuke you heavy rains, uh, I command you to rise up and leave. And my son Brad, he starts shouting, Brad's a quiet guy, but he never shouts hardly. But he said, hey dad, look at this, look at this. I said, in the name of Jesus, that storm on his phone, which was coming, stopped and went up. And went north. Right like that. From that, listen, spiritual warfare, however you have, whatever you want to call it, I'm a warrior for God. I'm going to be a fighter. I'm going to win my battles. Amen. I'm not going to let the devil, I'm not going to let, I mean, we better be against all these tornadoes coming through this country. You better be on into that. You better know that you have the power over the elements. Jesus did. 
Aren't you his ambassador? Aren't you his representative? He come out in the storm and said, peace be still. And the storm come, come to an end. You know, he come to the demon possessed man and said, come out of him. Amen. And out he came into the swine. It, it, whatever Jesus did, it was a battle that he won. Jesus never lost a battle. And I want you to know, I'm going to leave you with these thoughts. You're not going to lose a battle either. You, because you're under the covering. You're under the blood. You belong to God. You're a child of the Most High. He is holy. He is Elohim creator. He will take care of you. Trust Him. Amen? Trust Him. Oh! Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Ah, quick, quickly. How long have I got this time? Two o'clock? Okay, thanks. I want you to see some things here just in a minute in this I want you to see elevation coming your way. Elevation. God taking you to the top. I want you to see acceleration take place. The speeding up of the miracles that you need. I want you to see escalation taking place of the increase of surplus. Ooh, how many could use some surplus, huh? All right, get with me on this. And I see this, and I'm prophesying, really. Uh, it's a spirit of prophecy. On me. I see saturation. God is going to saturate those that walk with him and love him, that are givers, that are doers, that are spiritual. He's going to saturate them with his mighty anointing. Amen. And it's going to change everything. And the abundance is going to come in. <coughs> Amos, I don't have this on, but Amos chapter, four, chapter 9, verse 13, says that the plowman will overtake the reaper. That speaks to me of speed. The harvest. I was going into the valley the other day to, to go to church a week ago, and they were combining wheat. Big combines out there in the valley there. And right behind them was two tractors and, and harrows and disc, and they were disking right behind the harvester. Man, they're ready to put in another harvest. I'm going to tell you something. God's going to do some speedy things in your life. He's going to do some speedy things in this church, Pastor. That's almost unbelievable. You're going to have a harvest that's unbelievable. But you're going to have a surplus. And they're going to keep on sowing. They're going to keep on planting. And you're going to keep on growing. And you're going to keep on multiplying. You're going to keep on going for the great things of God. <coughs> yeah, you're faced with choices. We can go into that too. Got a story, time for another story? Yep. Linda and I faced the biggest, one of the biggest choices we ever had to make in starting this church. It took, really, it took, I, I, I say it almost took spiritual stupidity. To, to, I mean, from the first viewpoint, when you first started, it didn't make sense. It didn't, it didn't see any possibilities. This was swamp. We had to clear the swamp, didn't we, honey? Amen. God started sending people in. And, and we filled this whole thing up with dirt, dirt. I see you're hauling dirt over there. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and we filled this up with dirt. But we had to make a decision. Are we going to start this church? If we do, we're going to have to have help. And we said, yes, we're going to do it. And God sent the help. He sent just the right people that would build and start and stick with it. Now, this has been 35 years. 34, 33 years ago. Now we have you. Wow. Hallelujah. You're going to get an opportunity too. You're going to be able to take the baton and pass it on. You're going to begin to say, I'm coming, I'm strong too, because I'm going to make this happen here at this church. I'm going to call, see all that I can do. I'm going to bring it to pass. I'm going to win souls. I was looking at you. If every one of you just bring one person next Sunday, do one person. Boy, you'd have a jammed up outfit, wouldn't you? Yeah. Amen. Start bringing them. Start bringing them. Start bringing them. A rancher friend of mine by the name of George. I don't know if you ever met him or not. George Lucas. He lived across the fence from me. He had a big ranch. And I didn't know him, never met him at that time. And I'm driving down the road into our place, and the Lord spoke to me. He says, go see George. Oh, go see George. Man, I don't know how I'm going to go. i got to drive all the way around over there. I, I, 
He said, go see George. I went over there and I said, okay, how can I see George? I got to have a reason. Okay, his goats get out, they come into my place. It's a good reason to go see George. Your goats are in my pasture. <laughs> God will do the dumbest things for you. <laughs> it really will. And, <laughs> and, and he, and he uh, so I went over and talked to him about George. His wife's a complete atheist, man. And, and he's sitting there and he, he's got cancer in the backbone. I didn't know that until I got over there. And, and so I started talking about the Lord. And, and I didn't want my wife to hear it. Oh, okay. And it took about eight trips. Brad was with me that day. Went back again. Every time I teach him a little bit about miracles, teach him about love of Jesus, teach him about saving, getting saved, getting under the blood. And he looked at me one that last time, and he looked at me and he says, how can Jesus save me? I've done so many bad things. He, him and his wife opened for Liberace and the dance team years ago. And we, we cleared it up. And I said, let's pray, George. And George asked Jesus to come into his heart and life. His wife wasn't there. <laughs> he asked him to come into his heart and life. God saved, give his life to the Lord. And taught him a few times. He ended up in the hospital in, in, in San Antonio with this cancer. It was taking him out, sorry to say. And... I talked to him the last time I talked to him. I said, George, when I walk out of this room, I want you to lift your hands up and start praising God. He said, okay. An older fella. I walked out of the room. As I walked out of the room, I looked back, and George had both hands up, oh, praising God. And the next day, he passed on. Just in time. How many people can you be there just in time? Oh, God. Oh, and my, heart, and my heart goes out because you were lost at one time. Jesus was gracious enough to send somebody to your house uh, to pray for you, to talk to you, to help you. Amen. Okay. I'm trying to close. Everybody say he's trying. He's trying. Don't work sometimes. <laughs> I want you to do something here at this church that is so necessary. I want you to stand with your pastors, Pastor Richard and Pastor Amy. I want you to stand with them and love them more than you do. Tell them, support them. They are God sent gifts to you. Never complain, never complain. Find always all the good things you can say and say it to them. They need support. They need you just as much as you need them. Amen. We're children of God. Amen. Then I want you to, come on, then I want you to help them build the kingdom with people. Go get the people. Go get them. Come on, you're just sitting there. Go get them. You drive 20 miles to make a $10 deal. Drive over there. Go witness to them. Come on. You might even get some of the dancers back to dancing. How about Raynell? Remember the days? She used to be a dancer here. He said, what, dancer? Yeah. I mean, we had all kinds of silly stuff, you know. Praise God. You know. we, pray, we praise God silly, you know. We, we just had a good time praising the Lord. But you help them pastors. Build. How many do that? Come on, get your hands up. I want to know if you're going to get serious about it. You're going to be a spiritual warrior. Oh, the next Sunday ought to be a great Sunday around here. Then be a militant fighter. Fight the good fight of faith. Come on. Fight the good fight of faith. Take the sword of the Lord in your hand. This is a great church. It's been the plan of God. And when you go with the plan of God, he's going to go with some of your plans. He said, take care of my house, and I'll take care of yours. Amen. Pastor, that's all I got to share with them this morning. But did you get something out of this? You Come are on, give the Lord praise. Glory to God. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith.